I'm down at Good Hope Baptist Church today with? My name is Mario Benavente, a community organizer with the Fayetteville Activist Movement. Okay. And so um, what is, what, what's going on tonight? Well, the attorney for the family, Mr. Ben Crump, has arrived to Fayetteville, North Carolina to share with everyone in the city that he is on the case in finding justice for Jason Walker. We want to let everyone know that the activist community is fully behind the mission, and that mission very specifically is the arrest of Jason's killer, Mr. Jeffrey Hash. Uh, he needs to be arrested. Uh, the police need to be held accountable for not arresting him immediately upon shooting Jason, and we want to make sure that the family knows that all the activists in this community want to make sure we get justice for Jason. Right. Now, what, what type of activity is going to take place after uh, attorney Ben Crump speak. We want to continue to elevate this story. We want to make sure that everyone knows that we will not rest until Jeffrey Hash is arrested for killing Jason Walker. I'd like to say good evening. Good evening. God bless you. We welcome you here at Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church located at 1431 Deep Creek Road, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Amen. We're here on tonight. Amen. At this press conference, we're here. Amen. To seek justice. We're here to seek truth. Amen. We're here to seek accountability. Amen. We're here to seek, amen, uh, that which is due the walk of family. So we thank you for coming. All of you that are here on tonight, we appreciate your presence, your prayers, and your attendance Amen. in this matter. Amen. God bless you. So let's continue to pray for the family. Continue to lift them up. Amen to God. For he is the God of all comfort. Amen. At this time, amen, we're going to have prayer. Amen. By Evangelist Mina. Amen. From Good Hope of Missionary Baptist Church. After prayer, we're going to have the scripture by Apostle Sharon Thompson Jernigan, amen, the president of the Cumberland County Ministerial Council. Amen. God bless you. Good evening, everybody. I'd like to say God loves you, and so do I. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father God, for another day. We thank you, God, for your goodness. We thank you for your Our protection, Father God. We ask you to let steadfastness in Jesus' name. We pray and amen. Amen. Good evening. Bring you greetings from the Fairfax County Ministry of Council. Psalms thirty-seven is where I'll be reading on tonight. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Yeah. For because they trust in him. I've read Psalms 27. May it encourage your hearts on tonight. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank God for Reverend Mina for that fervent prayer. Apostle Jerdigan, thank you so much for the scripture. I'm sorry, y'all. I am Pastor Hooker. I'm the pastor of this great church. Amen. 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 We thank God. For you. Amen. Let me, uh, uh, Attorney Rogers told me, I was a little nervous, he told me I was at home. Amen. Oh, Amen. Amen. So, Amen. Amen. And since I'm at home, Come on. then I need to act like I'm at home. Ain't that right? Amen. 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 So we are not trying to uh, be like anybody but myself, ain't that right? Amen. So y'all don't mind if I get happy. Amen. I'm not here to preach. That's not my intentions. Amen. Amen. All right then, let's move on. We want to recognize, amen, some of our elected officials 
amen, in the building on tonight. We have with us our mayor, amen, Mitch Coleman, amen, uh, amen. We thank God for him. And if there's any other elected officials here in the building, amen, we're going to ask you at this time to stand. Any other elected officials? Amen. All right, God bless you, sir. Amen. Father, Commissioner Evans, amen. We thank God, amen, for him. Also, we have, amen, from the Union of Unions, we have Reverend Ted Smith, amen, the Secretary of the Union Union of the Union Missionary Baptist Association. Reverend Ted Smith. Uh, we have the first vice president of the Fayetteville branch of the NWCP, Mr. Miguel Rodriguez. He here today. Amen. All right. We thank God for him. Also, I was told we have Blake County NWACP. They're here on tonight. Blake County NWACP. All right. Amen. God bless you. Again, we thank you so much, amen, for your coming and your support. While I'm here, amen, I just want to say a little something before we bring the family up. Uh, and we want to thank God for Attorney Crump, amen, and his team uh, with us all uh, tonight, amen, and others that, that came with him, amen, in support of this family, amen, amen. 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 This is, amen, uh, as I was talking with the family, amen, again, I'm at home, so. Again, since I'm at home, we're going to try to be at home. Amen, but sir. we uh, talking with Apostle uh, Jernigan on the other day at the house. So at this time, amen, uh, uh, Attorney Rogers is going to come. Amen. He's going to come and introduce and bring up, amen, uh, our uh, speaker on tonight, Attorney uh, Ben Crump. Give, give him a hand as he comes. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's give them a hook and another round of applause. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Yet again, we gather seeking justice. We gather seeking justice where our life has been wrongfully and unnecessarily taken. Yes, sir. You know, now last week it was Stephen Addison, you know, killed at a stoplight by somebody who just didn't care about life. Ah. We stand here again tonight for Jason Walker, killed at the hands of a law enforcement officer. Yeah. Someone sworn to protect us. Someone sworn to, sworn to serve the community. We gather to seek justice for Jason. Yeah. Yeah. Now we gather peacefully yeah. and patiently awaiting answers to questions, questions we prefer not to even have to ask. And as we assemble today, we bring a man who has been voted the most influent, one of the most influential people in the world, a man who, let's give that a round of applause. <laughs> and a man who's chosen to use that influence not just for himself, but for civil rights something that most lawyers don't even want to touch anymore. Amen. A man who's put his life on the line in many instances. You don't know about the threats that he deals with every day, but a man who's standing for Jason today. He stood for Ahmaud Arbery. Yeah. He stood for George Floyd. He stood for Trayvon Martin. He's a giant killer and a trailblazer. And most of all, he's my homeboy from Lumberton, North Carolina. Without further ado, let's give him a call. Benjamin Trump. Yeah, before I start my comments, I am looking at the face of Jason Walker's family. I see his brothers, Marlo and Lanell. I see his mother, Janice, and his father, Anthony. And I see his aunt and his uncle sitting here on the front row. And y'all, they seem so heartbroken and lonely. 
So before we say anything, before we do anything, Fairbairn, North Carolina, before I thank Alan and Reverend Hooker for letting us be in his cathedral tonight, the first thing I want us to do is let Jason Walker family know that they are not alone. So let's stand up on our feet and let them know that Jason Walker matters. 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 Like we mean it. Jason Walker matters. 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 Because Reverend Hooker, Mayor Colvin, saints and friends, activists, protesters, but by the grace of God, that could be your loved one. That could be your brother, your son, your father. I'm so grateful to be at the front line fighting for justice for one of the best lawyers I've ever had the honor to work with, my homeboy, your native son, Attorney Allen Rogers. He and Attorney Bobby DeCella, we're going to represent Jason's family and his son, Kristen, to get into the truth. And the truth will set us free. It's about getting to the truth. We're not asking for anything extraordinary. All we're asking is for the truth. Mayor Hooker, I could not let it be lost on me that you said this is where Jason was brought up in the church. And I know it's going to be the church and the prayers that sustain his mama, his daddy, his brothers, his aunts, uncles, family. But most of all, it's going to be the prayers that sustain his 14-year-old son. Yes. Who he was a single parent raising. Yes. You know, yeah, that deserves a round of applause. Because Mayor Coleman, oftentimes black men get a bad rap talking about we are not there for our children. We don't love our children. Well, it is evidence overwhelming that Jason Walker loved his little boy. That Jason Walker spent as much time as any father could spend with his son. And what will we tell Christian? What will we tell that 14-year-old son now who has to grow up without his father? There are a lot of reasons why black children have to grow up without their fathers. But this reason is unacceptable. This is unacceptable that we have to tell that young boy that his father was shot unnecessarily, unjustifiably, and unconstitutionally by somebody who was supposed to protect and serve him. You see, he wasn't killed by a regular citizen, even though at the time, and we'll talk about that, that off-duty deputy was a regular citizen. And he should have been treated like a regular citizen. He should have been treated like he was on duty. He should have been treated like he was above the law. He should have been treated like Jason didn't deserve due process. I mean, we, we got to talk about this. But I understand, Attorney Rogers, Reverend Hooker, I understand that 
He was a sworn law enforcement officer. That meant he was a trained professional. He was supposed to be trained to protect and serve life, not to take life. He was supposed to be trained to de-escalate situations, not escalate situations. And so, what was it about that training that didn't apply on that particular day? Why he would not try to de-escalate a situation versus using deadly force? These are the questions that have to be answered. I think about, it's so appropriate, Reverend Hooker, that we're in the house of the Lord, because just a few weeks, Philonis and Brandon and I get to telling that my home people in North Carolina, the special people we have here with me tonight, but it was just a few weeks back that we were down in Brunswick, Georgia, fighting for justice for Ahmaud Aubrey to say that you just can't kill us unjustifiably and claim self-defense and think that it's going to be swept under the rug. We ain't, going, we ain't doing that no more. And Reverend Hooker, it was in that courthouse in Brunswick, the criminal defense lawyers who were representing the lynch mob who lynched Ahmaud Aubrey for jogging while black, said that we don't think we can have more than one pastor coming to the church to help comfort the family, Attorney Rogers, and help them keep their sanity in this insane situation. But I want you to know, the, when they meant it for bad, God meant it for good. And it was the prayers of not just those pastors like Reverend Al and Reverend Jackson, but it was pastors all over America. 500 of them showed up down there in Brunswick, Georgia, to say that there's a higher authority than the sheriff's department. There is a higher authority than the district attorney. There's a higher authority than the state bureau investigation. There's a higher authority than the FBI. There's a higher authority than the Department of Justice. Mr. Walker, Ms. Walker, there's a higher authority who sits up in heaven, and he's God Almighty, and he sits high, and he looks low, and he has an uncanny ability to reveal the truth, and to when people are blind not to let the truth be known. So we going to claim faith that God is going to help us get to the truth of why Jason lost his family. And what happened on that night? And so, before I talk about his family, I want to take a moment of personal privilege if you, you would indulge me. Uh, we, we fight a lot all around the country for justice. And um, it's a, a grueling struggle to do it. And nobody does it by themselves. It's always a team. Like I said, Attorney Rogers, Attorney Bobby DiCello, they're going to be doing a lot of work. It's a legal team. It's, not, it's never been from by himself. And, and I would be remiss if I didn't at least acknowledge my investigator, my drivers who drove me from Charleston, South Carolina, where we were fighting for justice for Jamal Sutherland, who was tased uh, 11 times for 46 seconds in Charleston, South Carolina, and killed because his crime, he was having a mental illness crisis, and he was black. And so, Mr. Cliff Jones, uh, didn't think of Robert to drive me through the night. Mr. Arthur Green, my best friend, Mr. Robert, come and help him. And then these two young men who you all come to know because they are part of this fraternity that Jason Walker is part of that know 
Nobody wants to be part of it. To be the relative or loved one of a family member who has been killed by a member of law enforcement. And you all saw how his brother was killed. I mean, it's probably one of the most horrific but most watched documentations of torture yeah. by a law enforcement officer on a citizen in American history. They say that the killing of George Floyd has been seen worldwide over two billion times. And, you know, to us, George Floyd was a, a hashtag. He was a cause. He was a case. But for his family, his brothers, Felonis and his nephew, Brandon Williams, who slept in the bed with him when they were little boys growing up together. He was more than that. He was their flesh and blood. He was their big brother. He was their protector. And because they took him unjustly, it helped give them a voice to come and stand with other families and fight for justice for them. So I want you to please uh, give a, a big round of applause for the brothers and nephew of George Floyd, Mr. Malone Floyd, and, and Mr. Brandon Wilson's nephew, who came to stand with the family of David Walker here in North Carolina. Because injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And just like the truth was revealed for George Floyd, just like the truth was revealed for Maude Aubrey, just like the truth was revealed for Breonna Taylor, just like the truth was revealed for Dante Wright, we want the truth to be revealed in Fairfield, North Carolina for David Walker. Martin Luther King and all the contributions 
he made to society. And whenever I look, I'm reminded that Martin Luther King said that the coward will ask the question, is it safe? He said expediency will ask the question, is it politically correct? He said vanity will come along and ask the question, is it popular? But Attorney Rogers, he said conscience will come along and ask the question, is it right? And Dr. King said there comes a time when one must take a position that's neither popular nor politically correct or not even safe. But there comes a time when one must take a position because their conscience tells them it is the right thing to do. I tell you, brothers and sisters here in Fairfield, North Carolina tonight, that it is the right thing to do that we speak up for the truth of what happened to David Walker. That we stand up for the truth of what happened to David Walker. That we fight for the truth of what happened to David Walker. I mean, we got to stand up and fight, and we can't be cowards. We got to follow our conscience. We got to follow our conscience. Because think about it, y'all. We may have been born at night, but we weren't born last night. I mean, when me and Marlo was talking, could, could we provide logic? They said, and, and if I got it wrong, hopefully they would correct me, but they said, this guy said, Jason went in. Jumped up on the hood of the car. No, he And who gonna jump up on the hood of the car driving down the street? And what's the speed limit on that one? Like five miles an hour. I mean, some things just don't even pass the common sense test. So, say he jumped up on the hood for no reason. And then took a windshield wiper and, and started beating on the windshield. Liar! I mean, I guess it may possible, but far as show seems that it don't pass the common sense test. I don't even know if they got Hollywood stunt men. They're gonna pull that off. You know, I mean, you jump up on a moving car out of the blue, or is it more likely what that eyewitness said. Yeah, yeah. That he's crossing the street and she believes that the car made contact mm -hmm. with Jason. Yeah. Yeah. And isn't it logical and commonsensical if you cross the street and somebody hit you or almost hit you, yeah. you hit the roof of the car? Hey! I'm walking. You got to hit me. Why did he kill him? Isn't it common sense that then there may be some back and forth between the pedestrian who was almost hit or hit and the driver? That's logical. But don't try to act like we stuck on stupid and give us some crazy, beautiful story, James, and say, y'all just accept what we say and sweeten his life under the rug as if it didn't matter, that his death was in vain. Well, his life did matter. And that's why we're not going to accept anything you tell us. Because, y'all, you know, when you think about it, we know in society oftentimes there's road rage, yeah. but it should end up in people being killed. No, it that should not happen, especially when you got somebody who's supposed to be trained in de-escalation. Yeah. And I just think, y'all, as they describe what happened when the other officers got on the scene, but Lawrence, like it reminded me of Ahmaud Arbery when, you know, Ahmaud is on the ground, shot, multiple times dying, and we see on the video the police come on the scene and they go to assist the shooter. You ain't thinking that at all. What kind of sense does that make? You want to be a first responder. You see a man dying on the ground, but yet you go to talk.
You see, they've already done the medical autopsy of Jason. They know where those bullets entered his body at. They know the family, the community, the public, and the activists all want to know yeah. if this off-duty deputy shot Jason in the back. Yeah. And so, if you want everybody to calm down yeah. and quit marching and protesting yeah. and disturbing the peace, yeah. well, why don't you try to do something to ease their mind. Why don't you tell what the findings, at least the preliminary findings, of the autopsy are? I mean, his mama don't even know how many times her baby was shot. We got to speculate. How much time has to pass before you say, I'm going to tell you all the truth. I'm going to be transparent. I mean, if he was shot in the back, come and tell the people he had one bullet to the front or he had two to the front, he had one to the side, he had one to the back. But don't keep us guessing because speculation only makes the matters worse. I mean, it ain't going to help the way you try to kick the can down the road, the more you try to sweep it under the rug, the more you try to tell us everything was justified because you're not dealing with that type of community today. You're dealing with a community who is woke. You're dealing with a community that's ready to stand up. You're dealing with a community that says we want accountability. You're dealing with a community that says we want justice. You're dealing with a community that say black lives matter. And so, if you want to shut us up and have us calm down, then won't you do something in front of you? A lot of people are going to say, well, Ben Crook came to Fairville with Attorney Rogers and George Floyd's family and stood with uh, Jason Walker's family. And what did he say? He said to the powers that be, be truthful. Yes. 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 Be transparent yes. and give due process to Jason Walker's family the same way you would have given to Deputy Hash family had the roles been reversed. Hold me to say that. That's what we said. That's what we said. So I, I love when uh, Reverend Hooker was saying. How many more? Because you have to ask rhetorical questions, Mayor Coleman, to make the mind start to work, to, to try to start to consider things. And so, in following what Reverend Hooker said, my question is, how long? How long? How long will they release the results of the autopsy? Yes. Because, you know, I want you to know we got the manpower, the resources, and the legal acumen that if you say we ain't going to release it, well, as soon as you get the body back to Jason Walker's family wow. at the funeral home, you know the first thing Attorney Rogers is not going to do? We're going to have an independent autopsy. So, you will know the truth. The first thing you want to do. The first thing you want to do. So, yeah, we continue to fight. We, uh, we continue to fight. Uh, didn't mean to even talk that long. I got emotional when I keep looking at this mother hole of head now. Because okay. you see too many. You know, I saw Dante Wright's mother holding her head down. I saw, yeah, man, you saw Ahmaud Arbery's mama holding her head down. Yeah. And they showed that video over on the court. You saw Miss Amy Sutherland and Charleston holding her head down. And I keep looking at Miss Janet holding her head down. We we gotta stop this vicious cycle in America of shoot first and ask questions later when it's black people. Yeah. It's unacceptable.
unacceptable. And our white brothers and sisters don't have to worry about shooting birds and ask questions later. We have to make it unacceptable for black people to have to live with being shot first and ask questions later. And uh, what we are going to do and, and for the media, we're going to have the family try to address you authentically. They didn't ask for this. It's very emotional. Um, we're going to call them up to let them say a few words to you. Uh, George Floyd's family will stand with them and maybe they'll offer a remark or two. Um, and then we're going to take one or two questions from the media. And then we want to end the night service with prayer. But we also want to end the night letting Miss Janice Walker, Miss Anthony Walker, Lonnie and Marlo know that they are not alone yes. and that we all are going to pray and fight for Christian's daddy just as if he was our one plan because as Marlo explained, he was Christian's lifeline. Yes. They spent every day together. Yes. And so without further ado, if you could stand on your feet and try to greet them with as warmly as you can. We have Marlo, Lionel, Mr. Sam, and Mr. Anthony. just like to thank you for your prayers. I ask that you continue to keep us in your prayers. And, uh, and this is, I know tonight we're talking about chasing, but I want it to be for all who have ever gone through this or whoever may go through this, but my prayer is that there will be peace. And most of all, just Thank you so much, Ms. Walker. And now his father, Mr. Anthony Walker. Thank you. Thank everyone. Everyone. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. don't know what to say. I can't hardly talk about it. But I want to thank you. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> Next we have his brother, Lanell. Yes. Hello everyone. Just want to say real quick um, to the legal team, to everyone that's here to support. It just means a lot. Um, you, you know, it's tough. I was looking at a picture that he posted. And you know, you always think you have more time. You always think, you know, there's always another conversation. But I think one thing that I say that all of us can agree on is, you know, when we seen the video and just heard the story, anybody that knows Jason knew it, you know, it didn't make any sense. No. So, you know, just the support, the support means a lot, you know, and just, the outpour, I mean, it's tough for everybody to deal with, but just the outpour of support means a lot. And when something happens like this and you know it's not right, not right, you just understand that, you know, it's just not right and it's just something to come together on. So I appreciate everything. And uh, I think we'll keep fighting until we get justice or get the answers Amen. that we're looking for. Amen. Uh, Amen. 
And then finally, uh, from the family, his brother, Marlo, who has been speaking, uh, letting the world know on uh, national TV just who Jason was. Uh, Marlo, if you can tell them who your brother was and what he meant to your family. Everybody that's here, I'd like to thank y'all. And if you know Jason, Jason was a good-hearted person. Yes, if you asked him to do something for you, you guarantee he was going to try his hardest to get it accomplished for you. Yes. And as far as Christian, like I said, they was always together. You never saw one without the other. So Jason, he had a loving heart. I talked to him Friday night. He called me Friday night and we talked. And the last thing he said before he got off the phone is, I love you. And that's how my brother was. He showed you he loved you by giving, by doing. Because that's how he was. He helped out veterans. He helped out his family. He loved gardening, fishing landscaping, working on computers. Yes. He loved music. Yes. And when it came to Christian, he would bend over backwards to make sure Christian was taken care of. Yes. So I appreciate everyone coming out tonight. Thank you. Okay, and before we have uh, questions and answers. Uh, Philonis Floyd would like to uh, say some things to Jason Walker's family. George Floyd. Uh, as y'all know, I'm the brother George Floyd, Philonis Floyd. Uh, I just. <laughs> I just like to give y'all my condolences. You know, uh, I know the tragedy, I, I know the hurt, I know the pain. Yeah. You know, um, I know how you all wake up and I, and I can see it in you. And that's where you, you reason why you get out and speak to the public because nobody knows who Jason Walker is but you. And you gotta get out and speak because I can speak, Attorney Crump can speak, Al Sharp can speak. But when you all speak, Amen. it presents the picture and people get to know it. Who he was. Who his son was. You never get to see a black father put on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. And you all allowing that to happen. And it's flowing all through here and throughout here. These cameras going to pick it up and take it all over the world. Yeah. 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 We're in a place where my mom, you know, when yeah. we used to come down here through Fairville, Charlotte, all these different places where she was born in Goldsboro, North Carolina. And I'm thinking about when Mr. Walker went down, the same thing that my brother thought about, his kids, his family, everybody who he was going to miss while he knew he was dying. I know that he was thinking of all of those things. And he was thinking about his, his son. He was thinking about his mom. He was thinking about so much. And the fact that everybody in here who's associated with him and who feels a part of him, we all are wounded right now. Yeah. But they say, we fall down, and we yeah. get up. Yeah. But I tell you, it's going to be a reckoning. Yeah. And it's going to be us. Yeah. We're going to be here on the God's light because he's looking down at us right now and he can see the faith, the passion. People in here who are willing to fight for justice and accountability. Yes. We will never be able to get justice for Mr. Walker, but we will get accountability yes. because it's no justice because you can't bring him back. No. His mom is sitting here in pain. His brothers are sitting here in pain. But I tell you what, I'm a fight for him just like he was my son, like he was my brother. My nephew, we don't, we don't sit down. We get up and we fight. We get out every day. Because every day is a mission. Every day. I tell people all the time, you gamble every day when you walk outside. You're gambling with your life. And the problem is, when we do go down, 
We're gambling just to get some type of accountability, to get noticed by the police officers, by the judges, the senators, anybody that need to pass the law to help us stay out of this wickedness that we're in right now. But the fact that if you can make federal laws to protect the bird, which is the bald eagle, you can make federal laws to protect people of color. Yeah. Bottom line, his life matter. He should still be here. Just like so many of our people, they should still be here. This has been happening for over 400 years, and I'm tired. I'm tired of the pain. shepherd of this uh, house and let him uh, conclude us with prayer. Um, are there questions from the media? Attorney Rogers and I will probably take more of the legal questions. If you have questions about uh, Jason, then uh, his family can answer. Are there any questions? Uh, that's pretty good with the media. But yeah. Well, I understand that the activists are doing daily protests, and, and we want to thank them. Uh, we, we thank the activists for keeping the light shining for Jason Long. And so uh, I'm sure the activists uh, will be able to tell you what they have planned. I, I don't know if the city leadership knows what they got planned, but I'm sure <laughs> the young people got something planned for your brother Marlon and my dad. <laughs> Uh, yes, sir. Uh, with this being uh, picked up out of state, how do you plan to, you know, focus your efforts? I know you're here focusing your efforts on families a lot. How do you plan to actually get justice with this being a state case? Well, and Alan can join me. He, he's an expert on North Carolina law, but I know this. It's always about fighting in two courts. First, you got to fight in the court of public opinion. And if we win there, then maybe, just maybe, we get to fight in the court of law. We had to do it with Ahmaud Arbery. We had to do it with so many others that they would have swept their life and death under the rug as if they didn't even exist. Yeah. Yeah. And so, the reason I say that, you know, Andrew Brown, not too far from here, in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, you know, we fought in the court of public opinion, got the video released, the video showed that Andrew Brown was going away from the police, went risking a threat to anybody. How can you be a threat to somebody when you're going away from them? But yet they shot him in the back of the head and killed him. And yet the prosecutors for the state of North Carolina said they thought everything was justified. Man, can you imagine if Andrew was a young white man riding away and the police shoot him in the back? That's why we keep saying there can't be two justice systems in America. One for black America and another for white America. We got to have equal justice for every citizen in the United States of America. And that's why it's so important that everybody just be transparent. Tell us where the deputy shot Jason. How many bullets went into his body? From what trajectory? From what entry point? You know, that matters. So that's what we're going to keep the pressure on the state police. And we're going to make sure that they don't think that we'll just forget about it because they try to delay. Martin Luther King said, justice delayed is justice denied, and we won't be denied. <laughs> Can you speak 
speak to, we heard from the attorney, uh, the deputy's attorney today, mm -hmm. that it's going to involve a matter of self-defense. The attorney said that the probe involves defenses of self-defense, defense of others, and defense of vehicles. I wanted to give you a chance to respond to that. Certainly. They said the same thing in the mod offering. Right. Right. Next question. <laughs>
killers were convicted for killing him. And so we, we can never ever think that we have made it to the point where they won't kill our children as Bologna said when they walk out the house. You see, parents of color, and, and I, I always share with my white brothers and sisters and my white law partners and everything, every parent of color, Ms. Janice and Ms. Anthony, every day when our children leave the house, we pray that they won't be killed by somebody who's supposed to protect and serve them. Because that is a real concern. Not just because it's uh, our reality, but it is a lived experience. Most black people in America know somebody, they say there's six degrees of separation. We know somebody who's been killed by the police and highly questionable circumstances. My white brothers and sisters don't have that lived experience. That's right. I mean, it becomes a big deal if a white person is killed and armed by a police officer. But black people being killed and armed by police officers are like a cliche. Mm -hmm. you know? It happens so often, it used to didn't even make the news. And, and Trayvon Martin, you know, help change that and it's real deep next month, February 5th, I'm sorry, February 26th will be his birthday on February 5th. It will be 10 years from when Trayvon Martin was killed. And you asked a lot of questions. All of the media like the one you just asked, sir. They said Trayvon Martin 10 years later, how far has America come in this quest for racial justice? And I believe we can show progress with George Floyd, Maude, uh, uh, what you call Dante Wright, and so many others. Uh. To Jason Walker's family wow. at the funeral home, you know the first thing the jury is Rogers is not going to do? We're going to have an independent <laughs> autopsy. So you will know the truth.
without further ado, if you could stand on your feet and try to greet them with as warmly as you can. We have Marlo, Rosnell, Ms. Stanley, and Mr. Anthony. just like to thank you for your prayers. I ask that you continue to keep us in your prayers. And, uh, and this is, I know tonight we're talking about chasing, but I want it to be for all who have ever gone through this or whoever may go through this, but my prayer is that there will be peace. And most of all, just Thank you so much, Ms. Walker. And now his father, Mr. Anthony Walker. Thank you. Thank everyone. Everyone. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. about my son. I just don't know what to say. I can't hardly talk about it. But I want to thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Next we have his brother, Lanel. Yes. Hello everyone. Just want to say real quick um, to the legal team, to everyone that's here to support. It just means a lot. Um, you know, it's tough. I was looking at a picture that he posted, and you know, you always think you have more time. You always think, you know, there's always another conversation. But I think one thing that I say that all of us can agree on is, you know, when we seen the video and just heard the story, anybody that knows Jason knew it, you know, didn't make any sense. So, you know, just the support, the support means a lot. You know, and just the outpour, I mean, it's tough for everybody to deal with, but just the outpour of support means a lot. And when something happens like this and you know it's not right, not right, you just understand that, you know, it's just not right and it's just something to come together on. So I appreciate everything and uh, I think we'll keep fighting until we get justice or get the answers Amen. that we're looking for. Amen. Uh, And then finally, uh, from the family, his brother, Marlo, who has been speaking, uh, letting the world know on uh, national TV just who Jason was. Uh, Marlo, if you can tell them who your brother was and what he meant to your family. Everybody that's here, I'd like to thank y'all. And if you know Jason, Jason was a good-hearted person. If you asked him to do something for you, Guarantee he was going to try his hardest to get it accomplished for you. Yes. And as far as Christian, like I said, they was always together. You never saw one without the other. So, Jason, he had a loving heart. I talked to him Friday night. He called me Friday night and we talked. And the last thing he said before he got off the phone is, I love you. And that's how my brother was. He, showed you he loved you by giving, yeah. by doing, because uh -huh. that's how he was. Yeah. He helped out veterans, he helped out his family, yeah. he loved gardening, fishing, landscaping, working on computers, yeah. he loved music. Yeah. And when it came to Christian, he would bend over backwards to make sure Christian 
was taken care of. So I appreciate everyone coming out tonight. Thank you. And, and before we have uh, questions and answers, uh, Philonis Floyd would like to uh, say some things to Jason Walker's family. George Floyd. Uh, as y'all know, I'm the brother George Floyd, Philonis Floyd. Uh, I just. <laughs> just like to give y'all my condolences. You know, uh, I know the tragedy, I, I know the hurt, I know the pain. You know, um, I know how you all wake up and I, and I can see it in you. And that's where you, you the reason why you get out and speak to the public because nobody knows who Jason Walker is but you. And you got to get out and speak because I can speak, Attorney Crump can speak, Al Sharpton can speak. But when you all speak, Amen. it presents the picture and people get to know who he was. You never get to see a black father put on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. And you all allowing that to happen. And it's flowing all through here and throughout here. These cameras going to pick it up and take it all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. We're in a place where my mom, you know, when yeah. we used to come down here through Fairville, Charlotte, all these different places where she was born in Goldsboro, North Carolina. And I'm thinking about when Mr. Walker went down, the same thing that my brother thought about, his kids, his family, everybody who he was going to miss while he knew he was dying. I know that he was thinking about all of those things. And he was thinking about his, his son. He was thinking about his mom. He was thinking about so much. And the fact that everybody in here who's associated with him and who feels a part of him, we all are wounded right now. Yeah. But they say, we fall down, we get up. But I tell you, it's going to be a reckoning. Yeah. And it's going to be us. Yeah. We're going to be here on the God's light, because he's looking down at us right now. And he can see the faith, the passion, people in here who are willing to fight for justice and accountability. We will never be able to get justice for Mr. Walker, but we will get accountability because it's no justice because you can't bring him back. His mom is sitting here in pain. His brothers are sitting here in pain. But I tell you what, I'm going to fight for him just like he was my son, like he was my brother. My nephew, we don't, we don't sit down. We get up and we fight. We get out every day because every day is a mission. I tell people all the time, you gamble every day when you walk outside, you're gambling with your life. And the problem is, when we do go down, we're gambling just to get some type of accountability, to get noticed by the police officers, by the judges, the senators, anybody that need to pass the law to help us stay out of this wickedness that we're in right now. But the fact that if you can make federal laws to protect the bird, which is the bald eagle, you can make federal laws to protect people of color. Bottom line, his life matters. He should still be here. Just like so many of our people, they should still be here. This has been happening for over 400 years, and I'm tired. I'm tired of the pain. Stand up. Stand up. Jason Walker's life matters. Jason life Walker matters. And so we will take one or two questions.
from the media and then we will turn it back over to the shepherd of this uh, house and let him uh, conclude us with prayer. Um, are there questions from the media? Attorney Rogers and I will probably take more of the legal questions. If you have questions about uh, Jason, then uh, his family can answer. Are there any questions? Uh, that's pretty good if the media, yeah. Would there be any further administration for like, you know, awareness to the law practice standards as far as what happens to you? Well, I understand that the activists are doing daily protests. Yes. And, and we want to thank them. Uh, we, we thank the activists for keeping the light shining for Jason Law. And so uh, I'm sure the activists uh, will be able to tell you what they have planned. I, I don't know if the city leadership knows what they got planned, but I'm sure <laughs> the young people got some planned for your brother, Marlon, and Marlon. Yes, sir. Uh, we just did uh, a picture about the state. How do you plan to, you know, Folks, I know you're here folks here so like, how do you plan to actually get justice with it being a state case? Well, and Alan can join me, he, he's an expert on North Carolina law, but I know this. It's always about fighting in two courts. First, you got to fight in the court of public opinion. And if we win there, then maybe, just maybe, we get to fight in the court of law. We had to do it for Maude Aubrey. We had to do it with so many others that they would have swept their life and death under the rug as if they didn't even exist. Yeah, yeah. And so the reason I say that, you know, Andrew Brown, not too far from here, in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, you know, we fought in the court of public opinion, got the video released, the video showed that Andrew Brown was going away from the police, went risking a threat to anybody. How can you be a threat to somebody when you're going away from them? But yet they shot him in the back of the head and killed him. And yet the prosecutors for the state of North Carolina said they thought everything was justified. Man, can you imagine if Andrew was a young white man riding away and the police shoot him in the back? That's why we keep saying there can't be two justice systems in America. One for black America and another for white America. We got to have equal justice for every citizen in the United States of America. And that's why it's so important that everybody just be transparent. Tell us where the deputy shot Jason. How many bullets went into his body? From what trajectory? From what entry point? You know, that matters. So that's what we're going to keep the pressure on the state police, and we're going to make sure that they don't think that we'll just forget about it because they try to delay. Martin Luther King said, justice delayed is justice denied, and we won't be denied. <laughs> Certainly, they said the same thing in the mod army. Right. Next right. question. Right. Yes, ma'am. Have you ever been contacted by the State Bureau of Investigations? No. All right. No. Bye. 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 Yes, sir.
does that tell you about how things are or are not progressing with interactions between black men and men of law enforcement? You know, that's a, a profound question because I do believe we're making progress because we saw in Minneapolis a police officer, we saw a police chief, and we saw police superintendents all come in a courtroom for the first time ever that I saw in my life and testify against a police officer. We had never saw police officers come and pierce the blue wall of silence. So we're making progress. We, we, yeah. we saw in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, after Dante Wright was killed by a white woman playing, she was put over her taser and pulled and shot him in the chest over a traffic stop because he had an expired tag during the pandemic when the DMV sent uh, a memo out to everybody saying, don't pull people over for expired tags because DMV has been closed down like everything else in America. And they pulled them over and it escalated and, you know, the reality was she didn't even have to pull her taser. They could have gave him a notice to appear. Yeah. But normally they do the most when it comes to black people. Yeah. But we saw a jury in Minnesota convict that white police woman for unnecessarily and unjustifiably killing that young black man. So we're making progress. And then certainly Ahmaud Arbery which I will say, and we still are waiting for the truth and the facts to come out. But Alan and I was talking about, about this case from everybody in London and Indiana, North Carolina. They said, we believe this is like a modern Yeah. That's what they said. Uh, a young man shot unnecessarily. And we saw a jury of 11 white people and one black man in the deep south of Georgia come back and render a verdict against the lynch mob that lynched that young black person. It happens so often, it used to didn't even make the news. 
and and Trayvon Martin, you know, helped change that. And it's real deep. Next month, February fifth. I'm sorry, February twenty sixth will be his birthday on February fifth. Will be ten years from when Trayvon Martin was killed. And you asked a lot of questions. All of the media, like the one you just asked, sir, they said Trayvon Martin, 10 years later, how far has America come in this quest for racial justice? And I believe we can show progress with George Floyd, Maher, uh, uh, what you got, Dante Wright, so many others, uh, Baldwin John, the few times, we have to remember the time when police get convicted killing black people because it's so rare. Mm -hmm. But then we always reminded of Breonna Taylor. We were reminded of the Jason Walkers of the world. Pamela Turner, I mean so many people, the Kwame McDonald, uh, Alton Sterling, all these people who were killed unjustly, a lot on video, and nobody was held accountable. So even though we're making progress, we still have to be here, though. I hope I answered your question. And I, I thank you all on behalf of Jason Walker's family. Justice for Jason Walker.